Where do I go? begin this morning by letting you folks know that in the series that we're in, we're going to take a break for one week. Uh, this week is United Methodist Women. Uh, are, it's celebrating. Are, are or celebrating in mm -hmm. two of our churches. The other two will be preaching in. Lois has a program this week at Tonkwa called... Uh, Stamp Out Starvation. And it's a mission project event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll happen after church. And so in light of that, um, we're going to be preaching on poverty this week, and then we're going to move back. And actually, we're preaching on God's blessings. That's right. Looking yes. at poverty. Yes. But anyway, uh, we're going to do that this week, uh, and then we'll get back to our series that we've been working on mm -hmm. next week on the truth found in between tensions of conflicting thoughts within the Scriptures. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a mouthful. So, anyway, today... Welcome Prairie Chapel yes. and welcome St. Paul's. Yeah, and we are so glad you joined us this day online. And also welcome to Tonkawa First United Methodist Church and also welcome Albright um, United Methodist Church and also our students at Northern Oklahoma College yeah. in Tonkawa. And we welcome all of you who join us online. Let's worship together. There's a woman that I saw in the city She was old and weathered and worn Sitting on the bench in the subway Drink a can of milk that was warm In her eyes I saw cold sadness My heart was crying out loud For the only hope for the homeless Is a gift of love spread around I feel fortunate that I'm able To eat something at every meal to have a wife and a family and a job that pays me well. But I know it could be tomorrow. I'm having a real bad dream. This life, this love, this security could be shifted to the other extreme. Thank you, God, for the life that you have given and this love that I can share it with the world. Yeah. 
other I can help them close to you at all they hang their heads and their feet while they could be walking tall but society passes blind judgment it's just too vain to see that the one who needs help tomorrow well it could be you or me I feel fortunate that I'm able to eat something at every meal to have a wife and a family and a job that pays me well but I know it could be tomorrow like having a real bad dream this life, this love, this security could be shifted to the other extreme thank you God for the life that you have given and this love that I can share it with the world and the means that I can help Shelter, I can help him close to you. Through love and shelter, I can help him close to you. Luke 6, verses 17 through 22. He came down with them and stood on a level plain, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They have come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you, on the account of the Son of Man. This is the word of God for us to live and share. Thanks be to God. The Sermon on the High Plains is what we just listened to in the scripture passage. And, and unlike Matthew, it takes place on level ground instead of on a mountaintop, which, you know, there's some theological implications here. Um, in my life, I've got the opportunity uh, to be blessed enough to never actually feel uh, the effects of poverty. I've never been without. I can't think of a single day. Me either. But I've sure been around a lot of people who have. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. whether it was as a child or a young teenager and working in Haiti or our time in Estonia after or the collapse Me of the... Mexico. Mexico, our mm -hmm. missions, trips to Mexico and mm -hmm. everything. And... And um, the thing I like the most about the idea of the Sermon on the High Plains is in Matthew, the Sermon on the Mount is up where Jesus is on top of the mountain close to his father. But in the Sermon on the High Plains, we see Jesus with the people at an eye to eye level of conversation and so um, it's really about the closeness and proximity of God to us and and to me there's a a deep and a rich theological understanding to gather out of that as we look today at the issues around poverty and so um, first uh, what do we see in Jesus's teachings here? Yeah. Uh, what we see, I think, is Jesus seems to put a good word in for poverty and hunger and sadness. And yeah. I find this interesting, don't you? Yeah, it is kind of interesting. Who yeah. among us wants to be poor or hungry? I yeah, mean, that's, we kind of want to avoid those kind of things. We try to avoid. Who, doesn't, who wants to go without a meal or, yeah. or experiencing sorrow, right? Uh, and who among us feels that it's okay when someone leaves us out? Yeah, like or... the, the rest of that scripture, yeah. when they yeah. just leave us out of something. Or yeah. speak against us or disrespects us. Who yeah. wants that, right? But Jesus calls 
these very people blessed. And says, blessed that, are you. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's an interesting thought right yeah. there. Um, there is this uh, pastor and uh, the story about this pastor. He's working in uh, the poor inner city neighborhood. Uh, he was there for a long time. And one day he found himself, though, um, a victim of mugging. And uh, so he's going down the alley behind the church. And there was these young boys and they jumped him. And uh, the attackers, these boys, they shout, keep him down, get his wallet, take his money. Uh, they were about four young people. They were probably, oh, between the ages of 12 and 14 years old. Okay. And one of them um, was uh, this one little guy, and he, he, he must have thought that he was a karate kid or a, a karate king linked to Bruce Lee or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just like that. <laughs> and so he was doing these moves on the pastor, okay. yeah. but... The pastor noticed that they weren't carrying any weapons or anything there, and they didn't look like they were a threat. And so he decided to confront them once he got up because they pushed him down. Uh, yeah, and he said, he told me, he said, now cut it out, all of you, right now. He said, I'm a pastor, okay? And, and you guys, you've got to quit this. You're better than that. And then the, the youth, they turned around and they started to run down, this, down the alley. They run, they're starting to run away from him. Except this little karate kicker, <laughs> he turned back and he came back to the pastor. And this time with a sad expression, I mean, he really looked like he was sincere. And he, he asked, he said, Pastor, please ask God to bless me. Bless me, will you? Yeah. yeah. Whatever our life situation, we all long for a blessing no from doubt. God. Uh, no. We all want to be blessed in our lives and our lives to have meaning. That's right. And no, no matter one, who we are. Yeah. No and one wants to be written off. Nope. Nope. And, yeah. uh, you know, nobody wants to be written off even if they, you know, are tough or appear tough. Well, they or, act tough. Or, <laughs> or you know, they, they have this destructive behavior. Yeah. But. Uh, how, however, um, buried beneath this hardcore, mm -hmm. and, and I love the idea, you know, they say that men who have bulldogs are tough on the outside but really gentle inside. <laughs> yeah. But, but buried beneath this hardened exterior really... Yeah. Almost every human being is yearning for purpose yeah. and happiness in life. They yeah. want to feel That's and right. to be blessed. Yeah, they do. But the question is, where are we seeking it? Where yeah. are we seeking this blessing? And our text today says the great crowd of his disciples and the great multitude of people mm -hmm. uh, from all over had gathered and just to hear Jesus and to be healed and to receive a blessing yeah and so yes. here is the setting yeah uh, so uh, here's the setting but look carefully at this scripture uh, uh, to what occurs what happens next because there are two small points that are easily missed yeah and the first point is Jesus turns away from the crowd and he speaks directly to his closest disciples. And so we need to take note that mm -hmm. he's not just speaking to the whole crowd here when he says these next right. things that we've read, yeah. but he's speaking directly to his closest disciples. That's right, and I find that interesting. And then, and then what Jesus does as he's speaking to his disciples, he, he, he doesn't say, blessed are the poor. Right. Which is usually the way that we quote it or we, we remember it, right? By memory, blessed are the poor. But listen carefully to what he says. Uh, Jesus looks at his disciples and he says, Blessed are you who are poor. And he turns away from the crowd and he speaks to them. He said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. I find this important yeah. to, to make note of that. Yeah, and you know, when I think about this, there's something within this, whether it be relational or whether it be actual mm -hmm. physical mm -hmm. poverty that brings hunger. Mm -hmm. Jesus is showing and demonstrating here a real propensity toward the suffering and the poverty yeah. within the world and within those who are his followers. And so... Yeah. We can't just set this aside like, um, and, and just suggest this is the same as Matthew's poor in spirit 
because mm. Luke is looking at this as being something more directed to people that actually are suffering from physical poverty, but yet right. Jesus is demonstrating that there is a real beauty in this. And mm -hmm. I think the beauty comes from the deep resilience mm -hmm. of people who are poor, the creativity, the ingenuity, and also the reality that they know deep in their heart that they can't do it on their own. Right. That they need God, and they that's need God right. deeply. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that's Luke's point. Again, like you said, it's not Matthew's. Yeah. Um, like you said, he's not talking about those who are poor in spirit. He's talking about those who are poor. Those poverty that are yeah. poverty stricken, those who don't have enough to wear, who don't have enough to eat. Uh, so Jesus knew these things um, himself, personally, yeah. because he, Jesus, he knew what it felt like to be poor and hungry and hungry. Yeah. He knew what it was like to walk in those who are, he had to walk in their shoes, right. those that are suffer, those that are suffering. Yeah. Uh, he knew what it was like to be misunderstood and rejected. Right. Um, Jesus knew yeah. what it was he, like to be He poor. was rejected even to the point of the cross. And mm -hmm. Could it be that one reason God wants to bless the poor and the broken is because they come to God with all that they have. They have this resilience that comes from hope and trust. Right. You yeah. know, um, in those who are truly poor that I've met throughout the years and spoken to, there are some that just suffer and struggle and don't understand why. But there are some that in the smiles of their face and mm. the gleaming in their eyes, you can see yeah. that they've never given up that hope and, and that sense of security that they find in nothing but their faith in Christ. Yeah. And so yeah. could it be that those who have everything, who are well-fed, simply don't feel the need for God in the same way that those who are impoverished That's a do? good question. It's a very good question. Could they see their need for God in a different way? Uh, those who are poor and broken, they, they come... To God with empty hands, yeah, and they and then they're like they're saying, "Lord, I don't have no one but you." Um, is it possible that uh, to be for, to to be poor this way that that you are truly free uh, yeah, from the entanglements of this world? You know, yes, limiting or poverty uh, allows people to do is mm -hmm. to really focus on the mm -hmm. things. The most important things in life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a freeing, it's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, for this Sermon on the Plain, um, remember, it, it doesn't begin on the mountaintop, but it begins down on, on being in level with Jesus. And Jesus sharing with his disciples as he indeed shares with us, right? Yeah. It's this kind of this uh, upside down concept of what Jesus calls blessedness. Yeah, and we, yeah. we don't understand that blessing in poverty. Oftentimes, yeah. yeah. We yeah. miss that point. Yeah. But Jesus teaches uh, that it is not about who we are or what we have. Mm. It's about our seeking and longing and our willingness to reach out and be blessed by God. Yeah. Not trying to gain everything on our own. That's true. Yeah. We're not... To, we're not to we, do it all on our yeah, own, are we? We should sure try. Hard for us. I mean, <laughs> you know, me. I'm. I'm. A, I try to be a fixer, and yeah. and man, yeah. that's <laughs> troubling. When when you actually most it. of what I'm trying to fix are things that I need that's to trust right. God with. Yeah. But uh, you know, you're right, and, and you know, but that's why I love this reminder today. This and this message for us today, where uh, it, you know, it points out that those who came to Him. They came to him, the ones uh, within, they came to him with humble and open and a faithful heart. Yeah. Um, they wanted to be healed um, in some way. And, and those who came to him, they were made new, uh, especially his closest disciples. The ones that did learn and did listen to him when he spoke about the beauty that can be found in the heart of those who know true physical poverty yeah right and it's true that it's easier for a poor person to recognize uh, that they have a need than oftentimes it is for somebody who thinks of yeah. themselves as rich yeah. 
but neither wealth nor poverty mm -mm. within itself is a virtue or something that brings us uh, to Christ or away from Christ. Yeah, it keeps but, us. Yeah. It keeps us from Christ yeah. and keeps us from the kingdom of God. Right. right. But, but what really keeps us from that understanding is pride, is uh, thinking that we can do it ourselves. That's right. And so That's right. Can we embrace our need for him? In everything? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Know yeah. that we're poor? Without him? No. Know that we're hungry? Without him? <laughs> yeah. And know that we're nothing. Nothing without him. Yeah. That's true. And that's yeah. really yeah. some really good questions to ask. Yeah. And so back to our story where Jesus, in his love, um, he looks into the eyes of his disciples and says, Blessed of you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed of you who are hungry now, for you shall be feel filled. And blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. And blessed are you when people hate you on account of me. Yeah. And just when we think we've got God all figured out. <laughs> just when we think we got God. Just when we think when we yeah. know exactly, <laughs> exactly what to do and what to say. Yeah. God does something totally different and yeah. unexpected. Something new yeah. and something yeah. different. Yeah. And God touches someone and changes their lives. Yeah. It's usually someone we would have never guessed or thought about, right? Right. <laughs> right. Then God in his amazing grace yeah. uses his them, grace. that yeah. person to touch us. Yeah. And bless <laughs> us and to change even our lives. Yes, yeah. yes. And how... A truly amazing is God's grace, right? How yeah, wonderful. wonderful. Um, the way God's kingdom works through this reversal of blessings, right? Yeah. We, we come to him for a blessing, and then he uses those that we never thought of to bless us as well, this reversal. Yeah. Um, and I like to think, Francis, mm -hmm. that it is just in those little acts of kindness that often God, that people are often unnoticed um, that God works through. Little acts of kindness. Yeah. Little acts. Yeah. And uh, be encouraged. We are blessed mm -hmm. even now. Uh, now in our suffering and in our need for oftentimes for poverty. I think about that and these are strange times and mm -hmm. I'd like to end with us considering something, and that is poverty for many who may not even know what poverty looks like may be coming. Um, part of our mission to Estonia was recognizing that we were moving into a country that at one time had um, a, a level of living similar to the way ours was as Kansans, uh, the mm -hmm. way that I grew up. They, they weren't needing for much. There was mm -hmm. plenty of food, and they had good schools and everything. And it was overnight that their economy collapsed, that their world changed, their mm -hmm. country fell apart, right. and they found themselves from going to being well cared for in, in the things that were the basic needs of life into having very little and some nothing. Yeah. And it could happen to us right here. In fact, I'm not sure that it isn't. But I do know this, that when living over there, I saw God working in a mighty way, giving a great amount of hope, giving a great amount of freedom, and a great amount of joy, Blessings. even in the midst of the poverty mm -hmm. that we faced. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to be mindful of that, yeah. that God's love, God's grace mm -hmm. is where real riches are found. Yeah, and he longs to bless us. Amen. Let's sing our closing benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, gracious, gracious to you.
the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you, give you, give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious, gracious, gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you, give